In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Welcome to St Mary's uh, today on this, the third Sunday of Easter. And in our Gospel reading, Jesus speaks peace into the uh, fear and confusion of those first disciples as he comes and speaks peace to us in our hearts in this uncertain world. Let's prepare ourselves for this act of worship. Let us pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for our readings. Book of Acts. When Peter saw it, 
he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and the the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all of the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for he will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer, and to rise from the dead on the third day. And the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I guess uh, a couple of the lesser used Easter greetings are Have a fearful Easter, or Terror of the Season to you. And I expect you'll probably doubt the sanity of, or the seriousness of anyone who used either of those. 
This morning I'd like to explore the fear of Easter, because it is part of the Easter story. We've just heard that the disciples were startled and frightened when Jesus appeared among them. Or we might think of St Mark's Gospel that ends with the women fleeing in fear from the empty tomb. Rejoicing and the proclamation of the good news were not instantaneous things. The resurrection is not as straightforward as we might assume. The fear of God is not a new thing. In popular speech we might say that something put the fear of God into someone. Right from the very beginning there was fear. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve hid in fear. At Sinai, the giving of the law was accompanied by fearful signs. Indeed, there are two intriguing verses in the Hebrew Bible where Jacob refers to God as the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac. This suggests that one of the elements of the earliest religion in which monotheism was in time discovered was a God identified as the fear of Isaac. We might well sympathise with a fearful Isaac. As well as fear of the divine presence, divine messengers or angels bring fear. Every Christmas we sing of the angel telling the shepherds, Fear not, said he, for mighty dread had seized their troubled minds. Is the fear of the resurrection just another form of this fear of direct contact with God? Surely God became man in Jesus to abolish this remoteness and bring us home to a restored life with God. First of all is fear of the first disciples, fear at the tomb and fear as we've heard today at the initial encounter with Jesus should help remind us that our message is not that we now have attained God, that the transcendent has become domestic. There is a temptation in church circles to presume that becoming a proper Christian, whatever that means, involves getting God. But God never has been nor could be reduced to something so small. The encounter with God is not something that we can encompass or control. It's not even something we can vaguely predict. If we always wish to dominate and control, such an encounter might seem very worrying, something of which we might well be afraid. It does mean, however, that there is an openness in our relationship with God. Nothing is closed. Everything is possible. God exists in glorious freedom, and we are invited to live as people free with God. Secondly, the disciples were afraid because the outcome of the resurrection was not anything that they could readily understand. Jesus is not present in a straightforward way. His significance is not in a body of teaching that he passed on. There's little evidence that the first Christians concentrated too much on the actual words of Jesus. His significance was not purely in the example of his life, for there's far from unanimous agreement about the order and interpretation of the events of his life. It is the proclamation of the risen Lord that is at the heart of the Christian faith. And this is not presence with us in any safe or really comprehensible way, but a way that's dynamic and life-giving and brings us brings in, uh, into a living relationship with God and frees us from fear of the greatest certainty of life, that is, death. This is where our ability to say what we think or feel lets us down. 
We can only say one thing at a time. Fear and joy cannot be expressed simultaneously, even if they might be mixed. And surely at Easter they are mixed. But the Gospel accounts get the balance right. There is an element of fear, of openness and newness, who is not slightly afraid of the unknown. But there is much more joy, as the Gospels show. The overriding picture is of joy. As humans, as the Easter people of God, we live with fear and rejoicing in every moment. For it's now that we are confronted with the new and infinite life of God and judged. But it is now that we are also redeemed through the same Jesus Christ, freed to live and grow as the children of God. The fear of Easter then is not the fear of guilt as we wallow in a Good Friday of guilt. It is the edge of the encounter with God that acknowledges that God is God and that we are human. In this way, it's a part of our joy, for it's the best possible news possible that God is not one of us, a celestial Boris Johnson may be. If we look again, at those first disciples' joy, their joy was mixed with disbelief and wondering. We are creatures of emotions, but these are not the most reliable ways of looking at the world. Post-resurrection, we are called to live in new relationship with God and one another, in short, in faith. We're not called to know and understand everything, in the passage we heard from Acts today, the people of Jerusalem are not berated for killing Jesus in ignorance. We are, however, bound to live in Christ and no longer judge as the world judges, whether it be in welcoming the homeless or the refugee in love, in criticising complacency and vested economic interests, in touching the outcasts who live among us. It is in part a fearful path, but it is more overwhelmingly the joyful, God-filled way our resurrection Lord leads us. So let us now stand and declare together the faith we share in the words of the Creed on page 6 of your service book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
in joy and hope, let us pray to the Father through Christ, whoever lives to make intercession for us.
We now pray that you meet us all individually at the point of our needs. That you show us the way, the way out in all our different struggles. That you order our steps and thoughts. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Forgive us our imperfections and let your risen sun light up our lives. Let your words be a light to our lives, our feet, and our paths. Lead us, Heavenly Father, we pray, through your risen Son. Merciful Father, accept this prayer for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Present be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory.
Lord, you are holy, indeed the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed to bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always.
though Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The body and blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live at work to your praise and glory. Amen. Uh, Zoom evening prayer is at the usual time this evening and you're most welcome to join us. Um, uh, the notices will be sent out later on uh, this afternoon and uh, do put all the various things in your diary. Um, especially coming up soon we have our annual meeting. That is next Sunday. So it'll be directly after the 11 o'clock service. Um, so uh, you won't even need to go home and come back again. Um, and there are a few uh, paper copies of the reports. I'm actually going to send them all out electronically uh, to the mailing list during the week. So um, uh, if you want to save some paper, uh, watch out for the electronic version, um, both of the reports and the accounts. But there are some on the pew uh, nearest the door if you want to pick up one to browse in advance of next week's annual meeting. So we come now to the uh, last of our um, talks about the charities that we support at St Mary's. And I was uh, going to talk today about the Barnet Refugee Service, uh, but I can't do that today uh, because uh, from the 1st of April, the Barnet Refugee Service has, cha has changed its name to uh, the New Citizens Gateway. So this uh, name change is to better reflect the reach of services which have now expanded further than Barnet and indeed London. It also helps to convey the journey that clients make to become new citizens and the organisation's aim to guide and assist this process. But the services themselves aren't changing. They will continue in the same way, but the name change reflects a shift. Maybe refugee service sounds rather negative or desperate, whereas New Citizens Gateway is looking forward to integration rather than dealing with aliens. Over the years, we've supported the refugee service as it was then through our Harvest Food Collection, part of which has been distributed to refugees and asylum seekers in need. They're often left with no support at all, with no money and not allowed to work. Through support as one of our Christmas charities, through offering use of halls to, att to attending the AGM, I have also experienced their support of individuals dealing with the complexities of the immigration service. The New Citizens Gateway supports over 2,000 refugees and asylum seekers each year through their integrated holistic model of support. And it's this unique model that's allowed them to extend their reach of support. Their services are designed to work together in an integrated fashion to reduce social isolation and increase community cohesion and mental well-being of refugees and asylum seekers. So what sort of services are provided? Will include advice and information, counselling and emotional support, English classes, emergency food support, men's and women's groups as well as mums and tots, and homework clubs and youth activities, befriending and advocacy, and if necessary, visiting solicitors. Many of the clients arrive in this country burdened by terrible trauma. Activities like gardening and opportunities to volunteer alongside British volunteers help restore the mental health and well-being of asylum seekers and refugees. There's a lot of need, but New Citizens Gateway is a really positive organisation which we can continue to support through our donations at church. It's also open to individuals to support through becoming members. Take a look at the website 
uh, Googling Barnet Refugee Service will get you there even if the name, new name, New Citizens Gateway, hasn't yet stuck. Thank you to all who have given talks on the charities we support. I hope this has been an interesting and an inspiring series. So now we have our final hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King. that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Yes.